All right, in this module, we're going to go up in dimensionality and talk about those one-dimensional defects known as dislocations. <clears throat> so the reason we talk about dislocations and their importance is because they're responsible for plastic deformation, which is a topic we're gonna talk about later when we talk about the mechanical properties of materials, specifically, permanent deformation that happens within metals and other materials. And so again, dislocations are those line defects, the one dimensional, and they enable what we call slip. And we're going to explain that in the slides to come. And that's between crystallographic planes. So uh, that's again, we, we, we do this in this order because we've already talked about planes. So we basically slip certain planes past one another, and this causes a permanent, uh, which is another we call plastic deformation. And we can kind of view this in uh, the schematic here for zinc. So imagine you have a single crystal of zinc here, and we're going to pull on it, and that's known as tensile uh, strain. So this is before deformation, before anything happens, and then we pull on it. So this arrow represents forces, right? So we're pulling on this single crystal bar of zinc, and what we see after it's elongated is that we have these steps and these kind of things, um, these steps in this material where it's very uh, uh, regular in appearance. These are uh, the result of dislocations, slip between crystallographic planes. So the the kind of the line here means that this portion slipped past this portion, which pass, slipped past this one, and, and etc. So that's what we call them slip steps. All right, <clears throat> so there's multiple types of dislocations. Uh, we can talk about uh, the two sort of pure kinds. Um, which are edge dislocations and screw dislocations. Um, and again, they're one-dimensional defects uh, where atoms are misaligned. There's some type of defect in the crystal structure. And we'll talk about how we define the level of defect or distortion in the material. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the edge dislocation. And this can be visual, visualized like this over here where you have a perfect crystal, but then there's this extra plane in this perfect crystal. So it's almost like it's wedged in there. And so this is, oops, sorry about that. This is defined by this uh, vector called the Burgers vector, B, being perpendicular to the dislocation line. So that's the definition. I'll talk uh, more about what that means and how you define it. But this is just the definition of edge dislocation. So we'll show that in the next portion. Um, a screw dislocation you can kind of visualize like a, sorry about that, uh, like a spiral ramp. Um, so you can kind of see that here. So you see this kind of um, step between the bottom here and the top. Um, and so this is the result of what we call shear. So this portion moving this way, this bottom portion moving this way, that's, that's shear. And again, a lot of these concepts we'll talk in more detail when we get to mechanical properties. But uh, we get um, this sort of spiral appearance. And the difference here in the definition of a screw dislocation is that Berger's vector B is parallel to the dislocation line. So the definition is different. And again, I'll explain what this means and how to find that. And just as a quick definition before we talk about it more later, the Berger's vector B, again, that's the measure of distortion, how distorted the lattice is. All right, so let's look a little bit more specifically at an edge dislocation. So again, we think we have this kind of representation of the uh, crystal structure, and the way we think about an edge dislocation is it's like we have an extra half plane. So essentially we're splitting the uh, crystal from top to bottom. So the bottom down here and then the top up here. And on the top, we have this extra plane right so it goes back into the page you can see all those atoms behind them and so we have this extra half plane because it's only on the top not on the bottom um, above this certain plane here and so that's what this edge dislocation is and 
uh, and again it goes back into the page so that extra half plane is the disorder right that's the the defect in the structure so essentially the what we call the dislocation line the extra half plane is starting here on the surface and going back into the page with this extra line of atoms so that's the dislocation line but our distortion um, of this structure is in this direction within the plane of the paper perpendicular to this line here um, because we have that extra half plane and that distortion is basically one unit uh, between these atoms so basically one spacing between atoms and so the so what that is is that's the burgers vector that's the direction and magnitude of the distortion caused by the dislocation and that's again the the burgers vector so again to define those we have the dislocation line starting here going back into the page uh, and then the burgers vector here you can see that's parallel or sorry perpendicular to that dislocation line that we see back into the page and therefore that gives us the definition of an edge dislocation all right so sometimes it's actually easier to think um, about this edge dislocation by kind of thinking about how it moves uh, through a crystal. And so here is again a representation uh, of that extra half plane and you can think about it as we're trying to shear the material, right? There is a, a force on the top of the crystal going to the right, there's a force on the bottom of the crystal moving to the left, and therefore the top portion wants to move right, the bottom portion wants to move left. And so the manifestation of that is that this extra half plane that we see in red is basically going to move over. And so what's going to happen is that the atoms um, in front of the edge extra dislocation will break and they'll recombine with these red ones. And then this will be the edge dis, uh, this will be the extra half plane and then the same thing will keep happening is the atoms in front will break and recombine uh, with the extra half plane and so you're breaking one line of atoms and moving it to the next and so it kind of looks uh, as it moves through and, and I'll link to the video here so that you can watch it uh, if you want but um, it's interesting to see this move from left to right as it's being sheared uh, and it kind of shows you what's happening on an atomic scale uh, of things being broken and then uh, remade in succession. All right, so the other thing to consider is if you're looking at this edge dislocation, we talked about this extra half plane, you know, above and then there's what happens below. Well, that plane that separates the top from the bottom uh, this is known as the slip plane and so this is the plane in which dislocation moves right just like you kind of saw here this plane that we see that would go back into the page um, is known as the slip plane and the dislocation line and burgers vector are on this slip plane Plane. So when we start to look at specific systems, um, then the dislocation line, which will have uh, units or which will have the form of a crystallographic direction, and the plane, which will again crystallographic plane, both of those should be on the same plane, and this is the slip plane. Um, so that's important uh, when we discuss specific um, directions and planes. All right, so now let's shift gears and talk about edge uh, screw dislocations. So now, again, this is the same image I showed before. And again, it has that spiral appearance. And it's, again, produced by shear. So you can kind of imagine a force here pushing the, Q, uh, the top of the, the crystal structure back. And then there's another force back here that I'm not showing, but that's pushing the bottom part of the crystal forward in this direction. So in this case, 
what separates the distorted part of the crystal over here from the undistorted, which is our uh, dislocation line, right? That's in this direction. Uh, or if you look at the top view, again, this is the distorted part, which is here, and then the undistorted part, which is over here. And so what separates that is known as the dislocation line, so this red line. Um, so that is now parallel to the direction and amount of distortion, right? So that step here from this point to this point, that's how much it's changed, right? The distortion. And so that's the Berger's vector. And so that also points in this direction. And that's why we call uh, these two parallel, right? The Berger's vector is in this direction. And then you see the dislocation line is in the same direction. And so in this case, the shear stress causes distortion in the same direction as the dislocation line. And therefore, that's the dis uh, definition of a screw dislocation. All right, so we've just talked about the two um, pure dislocations. And what I wanna kind of mention now is that if we look at and talk about real dislocations, they're actually mixtures, or they actually can be mixtures of those two. So we don't always have pure edge or pure screw dislocations. We may actually have a mixed dislocation. And so I kind of want to show you how that is. So here on this face of the crystal, you'll notice it looks exactly like um, a screw dislocation. So if you just kind of look at this face, that's all you see. And then if you look at just this face, all you see over here, if you look closely, is an extra half plane and therefore an edge dislocation. And then here's the same um, sort of top view showing it. So what happens is actually these two are going to link up. So we have the edge over here and over here, and we have the screw dislocation here and here. And so this is actually a mixed dislocation, and you can see in between here they actually link up, right? It's one dislocation, it's just uh, characters of both um, in, in between, right? So here it's a perfect screw, here it's a perfect edge, but as you go in the middle here you see the curvature, and so it's got mixed character of those two. So that's pretty common for a real dislocation in a real material. There's character of both. 